I want to look at resolving power. Um, resolving power um, takes us back to when we looked at the fractions for a single slit. Remember we did the fractions for a single split and we split it up into quarters. Then we had this screen that's actually a long way from the actual thing. And we took two points, half the width of the slit, and said that the minimum ended up being at d sine theta equals the wavelength. And what this, um, this came as a little bit of a surprise really because um, we expect the wavelength difference or path difference to end up being um, a period of uh, a point of constructive interference. So we end up getting that diffraction pattern um, with a single slit, sort of you get a central maximum, but then you get this little area or this little minimum over at that point there. So um, what's that got to do with resolving power? Well, it's got a lot to do with resolving power because if you've got this point source, um, or point object and you put it through a lens or something like that and you've got its image here what you'll see is that its image actually is if it's a point source not a point but a diffraction uh, a series of diffraction rings with a central maximum a little bit of a minimum in a maximum so when you've got these two point sources over here and they come through here, what you're going to get is these two diffraction patterns. And your ability to resolve these objects, resolving means see them as two objects, means the ability to separate two diffraction patterns. So it's like if those two objects present a diffraction pattern where pretty much you maybe you've just got one diffraction pattern this is over here as your image then you don't see this two objects as two objects you see them as one object okay if you get a diffraction pattern the two diffraction patterns are slightly more off then you can sort of make out the two objects that's your that's your image the two objects actually are separate so this your object actually is like that but your ability to resolve them, we're saying they're two objects, your ability to resolve them depends on the two diffraction patterns you get. And we know that that distance, your diffraction patterns, very much depends on your wavelength. So the smaller your wavelength, right, with this whole thing, then the better you're going to actually be able to resolve these issues um, compared to this distance, right? So if we've got two completely separate if you like two completely separate diffraction patterns then these objects sorry are completely resolved and that's called you know your 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 resolving power now through a circular gap or lens or something then the resolving power equation is not this that was for a slit a rectangular slit if it's it's a very similar formula though the formula actually is it, we just bring in this other constant which is that d sine theta equals 1.22 wavelengths okay that's what it works out with a circle similar sort of proof to what we did with the rectangular slit and so we can say sine of theta just equals that so if we're looking at the two sources and we want to know our ability to resolve them then we can say that the angle um, is going to be equal to this is our it's got it's got a it's got a name the angle is going to be equal to the inverse so the angle is going to be equal to the inverse of 1.22 wavelengths over d to minus one it's the inverse sine right that's the angular separation for those two objects that's called Rayleigh's criterion or Rayleigh's or Rayleigh's criterion and what they end up doing is actually dropping the sine for small angles and using theta and radians and we basically just say it's 1.22 wavelengths over d that's this that's the smallest you're going to be able to resolve right where you've got 
the maxima of one in the same location as the minima of another. You need to have an angular separation bigger than that to get that. And the angular separation is this, which we've already worked out. Now, having a look at that angle, as the D gets bigger, I suppose, that's the, that's the size of the gap, then that angle gets smaller. All right, so you can get a better um, a better resolution. Resolution being that we want the smallest angle possible, and the smallest angle possible um, between these two objects is when the wavelength is small or the D is big. It's always the things we look at. So that's why with a telescope or something, the bigger your lens, the better you can resolve two objects because the bigger the lens is the bigger the D. Or if the wavelength you're using when you're looking through a microscope and you're trying to see detail, the smaller those little spaces that you're trying to see down below one micron or something, if you go to an ultraviolet with its smaller wavelength, then the angle that you're going to be able to separate is going to be smaller and your resolution is going to be higher. thought we should talk about that.